Uh, Nakia, Nakia Stevens of Damn Right Originals. I'm so happy yes. to have you for our NBAF audience of filmmakers. I'm happy to be here. Um, Nakia is a great friend of mine, everyone. I know her um, as, first off, a local native of Atlanta, which is very important to me. Very important to me. <laughs> um, so important. <laughs> yes, just a dope Black woman from Atlanta doing awesome things. Um, I'll let you mm -hmm. get more into your story, but... I want to start off by saying that this is a conversation between two Black women in film who mm -hmm. are both um, really setting their own path and doing their own thing because why wait for folks? Right. 2020. Like, who, we don't have that, that luxury. No, we don't. <laughs> um, so this is will be very informal, very personable. Mm -hmm. This is my good girlfriend, a woman who I admire a whole bunch. Um, and I really think that our audience can benefit a lot from hearing both of us engage this way, but also yeah. hearing like our individual perspectives on where we are now. Um, yeah. And of course, like where we want to go. So mm -hmm. in saying that, um, Nakia Stevens, if you don't mind, could you please tell the audience <laughs> who you are and what you do? Yeah, um, so I'm Nakia Stevens. I'm a screenwriter and I'm the founder of Dan Wright Originals, which is an independent screenwriting label. Um, based jointly in Atlanta and Los Angeles. And yeah, I just write scripts and I make things shake. I uh, started off very indie, mm -hmm. um, maybe $500 from people who said, yeah, they'll come on board to shoot a small little something. Yeah. Um, and then from there, and just the belief that we could, we kind of grew. And then from, from like connecting or watching people like you and Amber, you know, House of June or in other filmmakers do it, it really gave us the kind of gusto to be like okay we can do this like I can figure this out you know because there's no blueprint so you're mm -hmm. you're just really kind of in the dark trying to figure out what works for you so I went from that to now having the opportunity to license our work and to get deals for distribution or deals for development and so it's been been a very humbling journey but um, I'm excited to just talk to you and kind of share our our I'm insight so so that people can like just take some things and have the, the strength to do what they got to do. <laughs> you said that beautifully. Have the strength to do what you have to do because it takes so much strength to just start. Right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, because it's such a process of like, how do I do it? Uh, what am I doing? And what am I doing? Every day. Finding your people. That. Yeah. I feel like, what am I doing every day? <laughs> oh child, I said that like 30 minutes before I got on the call. <laughs> right. I need like, to be texting the key about my life. <laughs> right yeah. like what is happening but yeah so For sure. um, definitely tribe is a huge part of it like just having people to let you know like hey like I don't know what I'm doing either but I do know these things and you're like well I do know these things and you're mm -hmm. sharing resources and figuring out together so mm -hmm. excuse that honey we're in Los Angeles oh well listen <laughs> I she's in Los Angeles and I am in Pittsburgh Atlanta so you're gonna hear trains <laughs> automobiles child it's so quiet right now. I'm like crossing my fingers. Um, just right. to give the audience a little point of reference. My name is Ebony Blanding. I'm a filmmaker, independent filmmaker, writer, director, uh, based in Atlanta. Um, I am mm -hmm. co-founder of House of June. And then individually, when I have my own little things going on, I do things under uh, Ebony Supreme Film. So into our conversation, we just deep dive in because we know each other. We're going to get into it. What mm -hmm. made you want to do this work? Why? Yeah, well, I've always been my so I would say my grandmother's right because my dad's mother was huge on like reading books. She has all the VC Andrew, Andrews books, which is like mm -hmm. flowers in the attic, like like weird stuff, but like <laughs> stuff that's interesting, right? So yeah. I'm like reading that, and I'm like, why am I reading this? But it was like great. Um, and she has books stacked, so like you have one side that's literature. And then you have my mom's mom, who's just all the movies, you know what I mean? She had everything that came out, even probably before it came out. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she had all the, all the movies, she watched all the TV shows. And so I'm just right there with her. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just really had a love for literature and then had a love for cinema. And I'm like, I've always been like, how can I figure this out? How can I marry the two? But I mean, a little black girl from Atlanta, I didn't really know what a screenwriter was I didn't even know that was a word to be mm -hmm, honest until mm -hmm. high school um but yeah I've always wanted to to figure out how I can better marry literature and cinema I love it um I think my story is kind of similar in that vein yeah my mother was obsessed with like black and white films uh oh, really? watch Hitchcock all the time that's why like I, I wow. had an obsession very early on with Hitchcock 
And my dad, yeah. he's not really an artist. He's more of like a blue collar worker. Um, yeah. Just like real straight lace dude. Yeah. But he came in in the respect of like, he, he puts his money where his mouth is. That's so right. So mom like looks more like, I got to see it. Mom, like, I got to see it, see it. Dad is like, whatever it is, child, you know, I like, work an extra job to do it. Um, but to I your point that. of marrying your love for literature, right, and words mm -hmm. with uh, moving pictures and then being like, okay, a screenwriter is an actual mm -hmm. thing. It's a profession. I mm -hmm. can do it. Mm -hmm. So when you started, this is like, and, and I'll start from the lens of Atlanta. This is before, like, Tyler Perry. Yeah. This yeah. is before Tyler Perry Studio. This is before we're calling Atlanta Little Hollywood of the South. Yeah, yeah. How does it look to be a Black woman filmmaker starting out in a space that is emerging in this, in, in this world, but yeah. it's still very much green? Like, everyone's still like, child, if you're not in L.A. or New York, <clears throat> it's a wrap. Yeah, it's scary um, because you don't have... I, I mean, I'm gonna say this probably a million times while we're talking. It's just no blueprint. There is no direction. Like when you want to be a doctor, you know you have to go to school for a certain amount of years. You have to do your residency. You have to do this. You have to do that. Then you're a doctor. You know, like for this is like okay, I want to do this thing. And then when you have people in your family, my 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 dad's side, they're very um, they're scholars. They're like yeah. engineers, doctors, teachers, professors. Mm -hmm. And then my mom's side, very blue collar. You know, so it's just like nobody's really an artist. So I really don't have a, a blueprint. So it's very scary. That's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, so I was watching this video of Will Smith not too long ago. Um, and he said, somebody asked him, like, what, what advice would you give your younger self? Mm -hmm. And he was like, I wouldn't give my younger self any advice. I would ask my younger self for advice. And he was just explaining how there's a certain like naivete of being young and just hungry. That's you kind of don't care. Yeah. Like, and I, I really like every day I'm like, oh, can I, let me just tap into like 2014 Nakia, 2015 Nakia. Cause I didn't, I didn't care what people thought. I didn't care who didn't believe yeah. in me. I had this dream and I was like, I'm going to figure it out. I didn't care to ask for help because I didn't know anything. You know, I feel like once you kind of learn things and you kind of get a little bit of notoriety, now you're like, well, I don't want, I, maybe I shouldn't ask for help. Or yeah. Maybe I, you know what I mean? You kind of lose that, you lose your naiveness, which is kind of like a superpower because if it you is. don't know nothing, you'll try anything. And so um, it was scary, but I, I feel like, it was a challenge that I was like open to and I was just so hungry that I was willing to do whatever, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I do think that's like an awesome aspect of being an artist when you're like, kind of like first cutting your teeth. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you don't know. Right. You know, because like when I first started with Amber, like I was directing and holding, you know, the whole boom. And I'm like, I knew I wasn't supposed to be doing that though, but I was like, you know, I can do it or whatever. Yeah. So just really kind of being scrappy and knowing that like mm -hmm. whatever needs to be done, you're willing to do it. And then yeah. going into when you're more in your process and you've defined it more. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I think coming from a place of, all right, now I kind of want to do things the right way. Yeah. Sometimes will kind of give you hesitation. Yeah. Doing the thing do the gritty thing sometimes so you know what I mean because now yeah. you are in a space where you, you you're used to doing things the right way so now it's like mm -hmm. so, yeah but it's definitely I definitely be asking the channel younger Nakia <laughs> on something and I'm like girl just, <laughs> just do the thing just all right so it. what people really want to know like every panel I go to every uh, workshop I go to like if there's like um, someone of note speaking your Ava your mm -hmm. Issa your Spike everyone mm -hmm. is always so eager because they want the juice right they want yeah. people to tell them that the tea of how do I make it you know like yeah. that's essentially why yeah. we all sit there child like yeah tell yeah. me what happened for you so I can connect the dots in so my can, life to make it happen right yeah. and you've already told me this is not like a one-size-fits-all it is absolutely not yeah very personal so very personal mm -hmm. for someone who's engaging in the work that we're engaging in yeah I always say that you do it because you feel like you're called whatever that means to you yeah right mm -hmm. um there's something in you that is just like a fire burning um because it ain't the money child huh. <laughs> and, and you know and we're gonna talk about money because there's some money yeah. action and we get into it the is. money 
But, yeah, but when you starting off, that's not what you're doing it for, okay? <laughs> I don't think so, nobody ever said, I'm doing this to get rich quick. No. You definitely want to have some fire burning in your bones, right? Right. Um, mm-hmm. For the folks who are watching our conversation and just for kind of the younger us who mm-hmm. used to be in some of those rooms and looking at the people who we admire and wanting to hear their blueprint, um, we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but when someone starts out with filmmaking and yeah. let's just say they don't have a dollar to their name, they didn't go to one of the prestigious schools so they don't have access to the equipment or just the community, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to take it from a writer lens because that's what you are and that's what I was yeah. and that's what we were first. Yeah. The story. How mm-hmm. fundamental do you think it is for someone who ain't got a dollar to their name just to pay attention to their story and to get the story that they want to tell first like what, what was your first story like the one that kind of got you started yeah I think it I think that that is the most important thing is having a story because like you're not always going to have everything else mm-hmm. and so if the story you don't need money to tell a story you don't need money to write down a story absolutely you don't need people to write down a story mm-hmm. you literally mm-hmm. just need yourself and like you said, like some kind of fire in your bones to tell whatever story you want to tell. So that's very important to focus on what you can control. Mm, um, I like that. And so for me, I think my my first that that's what it was. I had the story in my in my soul, and I was just like, I have to just write this down. I don't know really what I'm doing because it's my the first thing I'm kind of you know trying to do and trying to trying to pursue. So I'm like, I'm just gonna at least just write it down. I just have mm-hmm. to do it. And don't overthink all the external stuff. Because mm-hmm. I think that's what pe- stops people. They're like, I don't know any actors. I don't know. Either. It don't matter. Do you have pen, paper? Do you have a computer? Yeah. That's what matters. If you have that, then stop worrying about stuff. You know, stop worrying about other stuff. Because that's, not, yeah. you, you, you're trying to jump to Z and you haven't you're even trying started to get down there, baby. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, come on. So um, I think it's super important uh, the, having a story. And then, um, I feel like I would say, I know people always say this, and I try not to sound so cliche. But Ooh, like, what you about to say? Start with what, start with what you have. Like, if I'm That's writing true. a story, I'm, I'm saying, what do I have right now that I don't to spend a money, spend another dime on? Uh-huh. I have an apartment. I have some friends who Absolutely. are extra enough to just get in front of a camera real quick. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I have a, either a cell phone. I got a homeboy with an actual camera who kind of like me, so I can probably finesse there that. Like, go. you got to think about, like, what, 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 kind of resources, <laughs> what resources you have. You got your daddy got a nice car. That's going to be in a shot. Mm-hmm. Your grandma got a nice backyard that looks, like, very serious. That's going to be in a shot. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm, what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you got to really, I think a lot of people just, like, dwell on, like, what they don't have, and they miss out on opportunities to just get very creative. Um, so, yeah. So, number one you're saying, which I love, is use what you have. Yeah. When, yeah. when, when writing your story. So, what you're telling me is, I can't start out with my love craft. That's what you're trying to tell me. I can't yeah. start off. With, okay, that's what I'm. That's what I'm yeah, saying. That's it. Yeah, I do. But if you <laughs> dwell on the fact that you can't, you're not ever gonna do nothing. You're not. So still, still write your love craft. Still mm. work on it. But say like, what's a maybe smaller version of my love craft, or what's something else that I that's still burning in me that I think I can do right now. Mm. You know what I mean? Like right now, yo, this little setup is cute for you, Eddie. Like I was working in the chair. We're going to make it a little dirty yeah. and we're going to have you do some like yeah. cool little stuff. Like we're going to figure it out. You know yeah. what I mean? It's going to be my little art film and that's going to be that. I started. That's my yeah. first thing. And I put it out in the world and now people are like, oh, Ebony, she got something to say. Mm-hmm. Like, she I like did a thing. I like where it's going. She yeah. did a thing and I like that she's a doer. And so now I'm a fan of Ebony. I want to see what else she does. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And now you have people rooting for you and now you got people. So if I'm watching you and you did this thing, I'm like, hey, Ebony, like, I got it. I have X, Y, Z. Like, I want to help you do whatever. I don't know what you're doing, but mm-hmm. I want to help you because I like that you started. Mm-hmm. People have done that has worked for me because mm-hmm. I started. And people are like, people love doers. Okay. I love a doer. Like, if somebody mm-hmm. contacts me and they want to collab and they have never done anything, it doesn't look appealing to me. I'm yeah. just going to say it right there. That's real. But if you're somebody who's like, I'm going to collab, I just started, but I made a couple of little bit of I'm like, okay, come on, doer, mm-hmm. work mm-hmm. ethic. I like mm-hmm. that. So mm-hmm. if you start, stuff will happen you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love it I love it um in particular I think it's so important everything that you said but like I want to bring it back to the doer part mm-hmm. I think a lot of times 
I know for me, if I, I look at the journey of my career and I'm like, oh, wow. I didn't do a lot of things because of intimidation. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like, you know, wanting to be perfect or whatever that yeah. looks like in my mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the act of doing is so miraculous. Like, yeah. and just doing what you have. Um, and to yeah. your point, people love a doer. People mm-hmm. are looking for doers. And I want to mm-hmm. say to our audience, for folks who are really coming from the point of wanting to get from thinking to doing, it's mm-hmm. really in literally in the doing. So stop thinking yeah. about it and just do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I said that on my first, my first screening of like my first feature film. I was just like, you know, I graduated tonight. I graduated from being a dreamer to being a doer. And once you do that, you you don't you can't go back. I mean, you could be a dreamer and a doer, but like Absolutely. you can't go back to just being a dreamer. Like now yeah. that once you start doing, you're like, I gotta do more. It's honestly like a drug. Like you're like, oh, I need mm-hmm. to do more. Mm-hmm. Like now and now you have a reputation of being a doer. So it's like you need to do more, but you gotta start. You literally just have to start. So as two writers who don't um, DP their own works. Because mm-hmm. um, that's not my lane. I don't play in it. Um, don't want to either. Don't want uh, to. It's not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what does that look like for a writer? Because someone has to then, you know, get this world, right? So what does it mm-hmm. look like for someone who is just writing their heart out? They have their, their love craft and then they have their smaller version of love craft and they're doing the writing. They're doing all of that. But they like, how in mm-hmm. the hell am I going to get from the page to the screen? How did you yeah. find that person or those people to help you in that part of the process? Yeah, I think that started, so for a personal thing, like in college, um, I was a math time major, and so we had to do smaller projects, et cetera. And so that's where I kind of first met a few people who knew. And then even outside of filmmaking, I was just a doer in other things. Like I, I did it so much. It, it's mm. like insane, honestly. Like every little club, I was like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I already had kind of had a reputation of somebody who executes um, and so when I wrote, uh, when I first wrote my, my feature film, um, one of my old classmates was like, I, I think I was sharing my journey. You know how when you're young, you just like every little thing, like writing my film, writing yeah. my film. <laughs> oh, just, anyway, just excited. Yeah. Um, and so when my friends was like, um, I would love to direct this, you know, da, 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 da. And like, I didn't know anybody at the time. So that was like the jackpot for me. Cause I'm like, oh yes, you're going to do it. I ain't really vet. I ain't really, mm-hmm. but you know, I was like, you believe in this? You're, you got the job, right? Yeah. So the more I shared, the more people commented, like I can do makeup. Perfect. Mm-hmm. I can do, you know, I'm like perfect. So that's kind of how uh, I started collecting little tribe members for yeah. that first thing that I was doing is just by sharing the journey. And if you, and by me being excited, it got other people excited. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think I would, I, I would just say like, while you're doing the writing also, um, see what you can offer other people too, you know, not to be transactional, but just to build relationships, mm-hmm. you know, like, um, I mean, I did that. I still would do that to this day. If somebody said like, Hey, we need a, xyz i was like okay i'm not too good to you know what i mean absolutely yeah cut some sandwiches if my friend Mm -hmm. want me to cut some sandwiches Mm -hmm. um so i would like stay in those circles support people because when it comes time to you people are more willing to support you because you've supported them or you've helped Mm -hmm. them or you've you know been vocal about like being their cheerleader Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. so that that's been something that i found to be very helpful for me on my early in my early journey just making sure that i try to support other people um, so that it, it's kind of an exchange and the relationship is just building from that. So I agree. And it almost has to be transactional because once yeah. again, everyone, not, not, talking, a, people, that's so neg- people think of it in a negative way. You like, know, it's, it's, it's community, right? Like it's community, exactly. you're, you're not, it's passion projects typically have little to no yeah. money. And right. so for people to work on your passion project, a, they have to be yeah. excited, right? Yeah. Um, and typically, if it ain't just your homie or something, like there has to be some sort of exchange there. Right, right. So I think to that point, um, and for <laughs> all of our viewers who are going to be watching this, like I know for me, and I got a homie right now, sometimes he beats up on himself because he hasn't found his tribe. Yeah. And so he's always like, you know, I have all these things in me, but I, I can't do them by myself, right? Like mm-hmm. I can't just go in a booth and record this. This is filmmaking. Yeah. Yeah. And to his point, I completely understand it because 
when you are moving in, in your process or trying to find your process and you don't have your people, yeah. you, you do kind of feel like, child, you're just in the wilderness by yourself um, mm-hmm. because you need all the people to help you do these things. The point I think that I want to underscore for people is to not necessarily be in your feelings about not finding your people yet. I yeah. think a lot of times people kind of jump a, a, a few guns and mm-hmm. you just said a few notes when you said that, okay, you found some people at school. Mm-hmm. So those were established relationships that didn't just come out of the blue. Right. Um, but if for folks who are out of school or who don't go to school, wanting to find their community, I always tell people, if you're in a city and you're a filmmaker and you haven't tapped into whatever film organization they have, I don't care if it's whack. Right. You're doing yourself a disservice. You're doing a disservice. Like you cannot yeah. be in a city and not do some of the fundamental things, like look at what the what the what the what the world looks like around you. Right. Um, so I do think that as much as we are kind of hoping that we're manifesting, you know, like mm-hmm. we just want to no one, no one's knocking on you. No one can find you inside writing. Right, like, right. Like, you Nobody find your people. And I think that's sometimes yes. for me because I'm kind of a homebody and I can be a person mm-hmm. who like, just likes my own space. Oh, absolutely. I'm very much yeah. so a, every stereotypical thing about a writer. Like, yeah. this, <laughs> no, but people don't believe me when I say that because I can be very much out in the front because I have to be for my yeah. company. But I really, I be like, I just want to be in my house by myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I realized like what you're saying like I had to I had to make sure to be a little bit more social you know and be just in the mix with the community and and the people who are who are doing things as well so Mm -hmm. whenever I need support or if they need support we can just make that happen so it's important in your independent journey like what for (laughs) you was a, a marker or a point where you were like okay things are popping Mm-hmm. Like something is like kind of bubbling under the surface. And if I keep going, all those things that I dream and all that stuff that I envision, I'm going to get to it. Like what for you in your very independent journey before yeah. you got to kind of brokering some of the uh, parts where people would kind of help fund and all that type of stuff, what project yeah. for you got you there? What'd yeah. You, you know, I, I, I like, I ask people this question all the time. I'm like, what was the, what, like, like, what was the trajectory? What was yeah. the, the trajectory of or your career? Um, I well, I you know, I nothing is ever one thing. It's always mm-hmm. uh, it's always things building up, and it seems like one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's the straw that broke the camel's back. It's like mm-hmm. the final thing. But one okay, so I decided in 2018 I did a short film month. Randomly, I was like, I'm gonna do a short film month. It's crazy. I mean, but I so love ambitious. that that Nikia for that right because today I'd be like oh I, I don't know but she was like oh I can do it we can figure it out yeah she was like what's the budget I was like I mean sometimes we'll have money sometimes we won't. we'll figure it out I was <laughs> yeah. just very like I'm like who are you girl yeah, like, yeah. the audacity was there okay mm-hmm. um but so I did a short film on month and um I did a screening at the very end of the year of all the short films we did um and then like after that I got a phone call um from a network Mm -hmm. and they wanted to do a development they were just so so shunned so shocked and like stunned and yeah they were just like you did all of these things like you and your your tribe you know blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. and they was like well what was the budget and you know I'm just being I'm like well sometimes we had money I think the most we've ever had for something was maybe about two thousand dollars that was the most we've we've ever had so yeah the least we've ever had was zero dollars so yeah um so I was just you know talking to that and they were just so fascinated and they wanted to do a development deal um and so I feel like I was like you know what me just wanting to do these short films just to kind of showcase my range honestly that was the truth of why I really wanted to do it I wanted to mm-hmm. showcase my range um of like different genres and you know different stories and um I, I really didn't know what would come from that. I didn't have a game plan after that. I just wanted mm-hmm. to do them, put them on the internet. Um, so that was a moment for me where I'm like, they called me. I didn't have to call yeah, anybody. No, like they called me 
and they wanted to give they want to do a development deal and give me money to make mm-hmm. more films just based on me believing in myself and just wanting mm-hmm. to put something out there you know what I mean mm-hmm. I didn't make it to for that I didn't mm-hmm. say I'm gonna make these short films so I can get a development deal I didn't I literally had no idea what what I was doing it for yeah. I just wanted to yeah um and so that made me realize like I real like even though I wasn't a person who waited on anything it's like that that just made me know even more so like I really got to do my own thing because mm-hmm. it's always going to pay off because people are always going to watch you and people mm-hmm. are get are excited for what you're doing because you're a doer and people like doers yeah. like that's I it can't say that enough people yeah. like people who do stuff and so and then from that like and then I had uh like a revolt contact me mm-hmm. um to do something um we had like other networks contact us to do stuff just mm-hmm. based on like one of those shorts or all of the shorts that they saw yeah so I was just like and even to this day I'm still getting like conversation like conversation started or still getting me in the room something I did in 2018 but still getting me in room so mm-hmm. I'm just like that's and in my mind you know as you grow you're like oh that's old yeah <laughs> they don't like, they don't care yeah I'm like no Ooh. child they don't care yeah they don't care I'd be like oh, okay well I always tell people your old work is people's new work it honestly that's yeah. very much so the truth because I'm always like a little cringy I mean I love my old work but you know when you grow up I be like, cringing child I be cringe hard <laughs> I be yeah. like oh yeah ooh. <laughs> um, but they just love it still and it, it gets the conversation started even if they don't like they might not even want to do anything with what you already mm-hmm. did but it just because you were able to do that and you maybe did, did it so effortlessly or to them um they want to start a conversation and it gives you more opportunities so all that to say I think just making up my mind about being a doer and just doing things in spite of, you know what I mean, really planted the seed that I needed today. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I might not have benefited from it immediately in 2018, but right after that, you know what I mean? 2019, this year, I'm just like, oh, wow, I'm still getting Mm -hmm. opportunities based on that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. I made the decision to just do it. No, I love that. And everyone, I think that you should be very excited to hear about doing something and then time going by and still having that work that you can still build upon that people yeah. still know you for. Um, yeah. I wanted to point out something really beautiful that Nakia had said that uh, the monthly film challenge of really kind of building who you are, your visual mm-hmm. canon. Um, mm-hmm. Our medium our practice is based so much on the finished product like Mm -hmm. there's so many geniuses among me like I tell people all the time like it's a gazillion people who have stories dope stories and that I'm pretty sure could maybe write me under a table maybe Um, that's the thing but it's like will you outwork me no so I'm not I'm not even worried that's that's really the tea you you got to do it you got you gotta, to do you it. work. Yeah, it's probably plenty of people who, you know, whatever. There's so many. Um, no, it's so many. And it's like, I think a lot of us get so, I don't want to use the word bitter, but because I've been bitter before, you know, it mm-hmm. comes with the journey. But I think yeah. a lot of us get, we, we look because we're such in a virtual world, right? Mm-hmm. So you can see everyone else's progression or what you see yeah. is their progression. You can yeah. see everyone's journey and what you yeah. think is real time and it's not, child um right but more importantly I I find that sometimes we get aggravated at our journey yeah. and our process mm-hmm. but we haven't even necessarily done the things that we needed to do and I, I said this to somebody else um I feel like I feel like in general artists always get, get a little bit of envy at you something can't help it. you could be you could you could be doing the damn thing and you can't can be at the next person I mean yeah. I, I see something like Hey man, da, da, da. and it, I, I've had a moment where I'm like, I could did that better. I could have wrote that better. You know, you we have those thoughts. You're it's an artist. Human. But yeah, it's it's an artist thing. Is I mean, Erica said it. We sensitive. All of us are. <laughs> yeah. Even if we say we not, we are. Yeah. And so my thing is like, I feel like envy or a little bit of bitterness is like a, the body's natural response to knowing you not doing what the fuck you need to be doing. Do it. And I'm just like. And I catch myself, if I ever have those thoughts, I'd be like, well, did you finish the script you said you were going to finish last time? 
So like check. I always catch myself. Yeah, I, ch- I check myself all the time. If I ever Absolutely. have maybe like a little feeling or a little like That's a salty note. or a little bitter, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh no, what you living for? You ain't even doing what you're supposed mm-hmm. to be doing. Mm-hmm. And I tell people that all the time. And I'm just like, listen, if you do the work, you you can't, you know what I mean? You can't, mm-hmm. you're not going to have any, anything to be bitter about. You won't <laughs> so. because... Let's get on that note. If you yeah. do the work, you won't have anything to be bitter about. I think that is so true because once you start doing the work and the work looks different at where you're at, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you start learning that your first draft might not be the draft that people start, that, that people buy, yeah. okay. right? <laughs> so with that being said, like for me this year with writing in particular, mm-hmm. um, I had to kind of rededicate myself back to being a writer. Um, and looking at what my process looks like because Mm -hmm. I had got so caught up in the things and the meetings that were happening, right? Being a filmmaker, like you got sometimes, I was going to ask you that and I'll save it for later, but Uh I'm just going to say, you got to, like being a writer and being a filmmaker is different. Yes. I mean, we could be both. But when it's time to be a writer, you can't you can't be a filmmaker right now. You no, can't ma'am. be the ma'am. you can't be in the field. You really got to be in your head with yeah. your characters, quiet, not looking at. Inter- I can't be. I can't mm-hmm. interact. And it's very hard once you have established yourself as a filmmaker because yep. now it's like you are. You want to keep it going. You you got to keep it going. You got to yeah. get the meetings. You got to get the maybe the interviews. You got to have the phone calls. Yeah. It's like I need to write. I need to leave me alone for like six months. But you like, have to you create. <laughs> You, you, know, you, create. Have, you have to create. So I do think and we could just segue into that. I think that it is a very interesting place to be in when you're creating where from the writing aspect, you're like, okay, yeah. I, I have to do this thing. I have to focus on all these things, but I also have yeah. to make sure that people know about me. I have to make sure yes. that I'm not missing anything, you know, on Before Twitter or wherever, because, yes. you know, child, they give out blessings everywhere. Girl, everywhere. First of all, <laughs> I've been writing and dedicating myself to, like, I'm not going to be on social media, and yeah. I'm just writing, and I get on later to find out they done gave out opportunity. I'm like, I'm trying to do the right thing, God. Listen. I done missed the blessing. I'm over here not getting on, and I find out Tyler Perry hiring writers. I'm like, what's happening? What's happening? You know, but sometimes that's you, it's time for you to ideate. You know, yeah. I told someone the other day, I said, for me to write, I have to live. Mm-hmm. And so I've, I've, I've realized that like living looks like really embodying my moments. And experiencing all the emotions. I went skydiving maybe like last month. Oh, Ooh, why so would fun. you do that? I was like, one, because I wanted to, and two, because mm-hmm. I'm a writer. I need to know how it feels to do this. I need yeah. to know what what emotions happen, what order they happen in, how did my yeah. body sense up? So when I'm writing about that kind of energy, that kind of emotion, it can be very authentic. Mm-hmm. So like, I really do do shit because I'm a writer and I need to live life. And I need to experience all the emotions I need yeah. to. I need to, to become a better writer. So like, yes, you have to live in your moments. You have to, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yes, you mm-hmm. get it. So when you, so y'all, when you feel y'all. stuck, get to living. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a good yeah. antidote, you know, when yeah. and also to taking a moment of pause and reassessing, you know, like, why am I in such a rush? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like, why am I in a pace or why am I trying to pace myself in this rhythm where the, the prize is coming before the work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or the story is coming before the living, right? Yes. So yes. you're just trying to like rush all these things to happen because mm-hmm. you, it's not lost on us, especially if you are in this in this practice that you see people getting deals. Yeah. Nice deals, child. <clears throat> Real nice deals. Nice deal. And so you just like you know, let me be in a room when Netflix is giving these deals out. You know. Um, I, I too, I too know why the cage bird sings. Um, okay. <laughs> Honestly, truly. Um, so yeah, so we have covered first off, like really honoring the space of being a writer. Yeah. Um, understanding that to be a writer, you got to sit still. You can't necessarily mm-hmm. scroll as much as you want to. You might have to take off some of your filmmaker hats and just be a writer. 
Mm -hmm. um, understanding that you need community to do this work, but yeah. not beating yourself up for not just coming out. You know what I'm saying? With mm -hmm. your, your brat for young, just locked and loaded. Like mm -hmm. all of these things take time, development, right? Mm -hmm. So you have done all of these independent works. Um, mm -hmm. You have a bootstrap, so you can't bootstrap no more. You move on where now people want to invest in your work, which is an awesome thing. Um, you're, mm -hmm. either, you're going into more rooms. You're getting more meetings. Um, it's looking really, really, really dope. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to go? Like, you don't mm -hmm. have to give the girls everything. This, we're not yeah. giving the whole, our whole bag. But like, because yes. I, I have another question after that. Where do you want to go? So TV writing is is my thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm not necessarily, if people go on in years, probably be like, this you, they're going to diss you me. Um, <laughs> I'm not necessarily like interested right now mm -hmm. in this body, in this space, in like features. Mm -hmm. I'm a TV writer. I like the longevity of it. I like the the game of it. I like yeah. it. And so um, TV writing is my thing. That's, I want, um, I have a couple of shows that I want to, you know, obviously show run and mm -hmm. do that. But I also, what I also, and people are always shocked when I say this, I also don't mind writing on other shows. Mm. So I you're not a like writer it. who's like, eh. No, I'm not like that. But I have to like the show though. I'm of not, course. I'm not, try, I'm not going to be like taking any show. If I don't, if I'm not interested in writing it, I'm like, I can't, I don't, I don't have anything for you. I'm sorry. Okay, got to But if I love the show, I feel like it's, it's the landing process because in order to be a leader, you have to learn how to follow a little bit. You have to learn how, and it helps your, your writing if you're like, okay, I have to write, but this is the person who has tailored the story, so I have to now match their voice. Mm -hmm. It's cool. I feel like that's a cool challenge for me. Um, so I'm not opposed to that, um, but I also have my own shows that I think are phenomenal. I think we all think are stuff is phenomenal, of right? Are. You're you. <laughs> and so that's my thing. And then, um, yeah, I also have like dreams of like, starting something to help other writers too but we'll just keep that under wraps but like I I that's where I want to go I, I want to get to a place I want to get on my James Baldwin like he was in Paris writing like I, I just want to oh, somebody needs to fund me so yeah. I can go and write my script away abroad and we no, can live I, I, I think we talked about this I want to live and write I just want to like big catch every now oh, and then oh god I dream about that I dream that would about that dream about it okay so that's my thing if anybody's listening yes and this will be posted <laughs> bless be a blessing <laughs> absolutely so that's where that's where I'm headed um is this my own show mm -hmm. on tv or uh streaming whatever whatever platform aligns with the show that's that's my my goal so back to it being no blueprint right mm -hmm. there's there's no mm -hmm. blueprint and you've done all these other things but this is another level right yeah um you've 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 produced your own works you've written your own works you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like you have really done everything that a creative can do at an independent level yeah so now moving into more of industry right yeah um and wanting to get signed onto a show whether it be your own deal or someone else's writer room from your experience now in navigating that space with no blueprint, mm -hmm. has that been like, how, how was that? Like, has that been insane to you? Does it still feel like you're yeah. trying to fish out of water? Yeah, I think that, you know, as I, as I listen to like the greats or people we just, just admire who have already mm -hmm. kind of made it in our eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I realize that we're going to always feel like fish out of water. Always. Mm -hmm. Like, even hearing them talk in their interviews, and these are people who have had several TV shows or several, yeah. it's always like, I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, that's what, and I'm like, okay, so that kind of gives me a little peace knowing, like, okay, it's going to be this perpetual just figuring it out as you go. Because mm -hmm. also the industry changes. So even if I knew what I, even if I'm used to this and I've done it several times, tomorrow the industry could change. And they'd be like, this is not how we're going to run it. We want everybody to do this now. And so now I'm like, oh, now I got to learn a new thing. So I, I'm kind of finding solace in the fact, you know, I'm just like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sometimes just not, not, not going to know what I'm doing. I'm not going to have any blueprint. I'm just going to have to stay true to like why I'm doing it. If your, your why will never change. Mm -hmm. If the industry changes, your why should never change. It I don't matter. That. Um, and so as long as I know my why, 
and as long as I know the stories I want to tell and I know, you know, and I'm passionate, then I'm good. I feel good in any room. Like I, I feel good on any MLK Boulevard. You, can- I, you know, I was about to say that. You know, I was about to say it. You beat me to it. No, I love that. I love that. Um, God, I had a really good question. Please don't leave me. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. I think I was going to say, that's what I was going to talk about. Okay, so on the writer's side, I've applied for a few fellowships. I haven't landed mm-hmm. any. Um, okay. On the directing side, I've applied for a few fellowships. Um, I've landed some, but not necessarily the ones I've wanted. Yeah, yeah. What does it look like for artists like ourselves who mm-hmm. want to break into these other industry levels um, by way of fellowships and all that type of stuff? Like, is that, are you into that applying to fellowships? Like, how do you feel about so, that? So I think like what I had to do was assess myself. I was like, okay, what kind of filmmaker am I? Am I the type of filmmaker or am I the type of writer, creator that can just write something based off of knowing this is what the industry is looking for? Which some people do that very well. And I'm like, mm-hmm. dang, I, I envy that. Because a part of me is just like, I'll, even if I start to try, it'll end up morphing into what I want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's just, you know, I had to assess myself. And I was just like, um, I think sometimes with the fellowship, I don't know. I, sometimes I'm, all, I'm like, do they want me to write for what they think will sell? Do they want me to write for what my, the best thing for my voice? Like, I don't know. So I haven't done, I haven't applied to many fellowships. And this year, I've, I've realized that I want to try at least and not mm-hmm. chalk it aside as like, oh, that's just maybe not my, yeah. not my path. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try. I have, I have applied to maybe a few. I think this year, my, I applied to my first two and I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm-hmm. well. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Yeah. I, exactly. That was yeah. my, my mind. I was like, well, I tried, whatever. But I, I'll try more and I'll, I'll try for grants and stuff like that because I feel like people have been getting being very successful with that. Yeah. So that just, I've been so indie that I'm just like, huh? So I don't know. I think you have to assess what kind of filmmaker you are and what, what path you want to take. Because even when I hear people talk on panels, they'll say, oh yeah, be a writer's assistant and, and do X, Y, Z, be an assistant. That is not me. That yeah. is not my ministry. I know for a fact I would be a terrible writing, writer's assistant. Ministry. I would be a terrible assistant to an agent and then try to work my way up. That just, that's, just not, that's just not how I'm made. Some people mm-hmm. are able to, and I think that's great. So use that. Mm-hmm. But for me, I had to realize and acknowledge to myself, like, girl, that's not you. So that, that's just an avenue that you're not going to take. You're not even going to take that street. You, your GPS don't work that way. Yeah, you see, <laughs> I love it. No, I think that that's a a, a vital point in knowing or constantly kind of coming back to what type of filmmaker you want to be. Yeah, yeah. And understanding that because this person went to that school or this person went to that fellowship or because they did it that way. It's not, once again, it's not a one size fits all. Right. Um, One of my good girlfriends, um, another Atlanta native, Daniel Detweiler. um, Hey, Daniel. Yes. Um, she has always told me when it comes to applying for things, girl, because I give you very much. I apply one time. If they're not messing with me, I feel a way about you. <laughs> um, but she told me something that was pretty dope. She was mm-hmm. like, every time you apply, they know your name in that room. Yes. And when she told me that, I was like, because I was coming off a, a big loss, and I was like, mm-hmm. that's cute. Mm-hmm. But if it's not the gospel truth, So back to another point that you had said where you had did something, it was like 2018 and they was like, screw it, let me see it again. I can say like for applying to fellowships because I'm a girl who I wasn't prepared to, and we'll get to California in in a minute. Mm -hmm. I wasn't prepared to do the voyage again to go to LA and New York. Like I was like, I got to stay in Atlanta for a little while. So Mm -hmm. what does accessibility look like? in Atlanta, it looks like me trying to get a fellowship or something, right? Yeah, Um, yeah. Very competitive, super competitive. Um, But what I learned, and back to Danielle's point was, and what we have continuously kept talking about throughout this conversation is the act of doing. Yeah. Yeah. And because you're a doer, doesn't mean that you get rewarded for things. Oh, oh, that is important. That's that is very, very important, important to know, know. right? Uh-huh. Um, because a lot of times we do this thing and it's so shiny and it's so new to us and we give it yeah. to the world and we're like, I did this. And sometimes right. it's just like, okay. 
we like Issa Rae me now. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. like come on, I'm ready for. And like you said, the word is like, okay, great. Now do another thing, right? Yeah. Exactly. Um. So to that point, mm-hmm. for our audience, not being discouraged about once you have activated and you've given yourself all of these, you know, conversations of you can do it, encouragement, mm-hmm. you got your mantra mm-hmm. on your wall, child, you're drinking yeah. your water, you're doing yeah. your yoga, you are zen out. Yeah. And you still mm-hmm. not booked, you and know? You still not busy. You got all the time. You still not booked, you still not busy. You got uh, all the time. <laughs> and it looks like, you know, other people's past and how they're approaching it, like, it's just working for them. But I definitely want to let everyone know that, like, in particular, when it comes to what our practice and uh, fellowships and residencies and all those things that you have applied for, some of the contests that we see, um, yeah. which I'm not really big into contests, but, you know, a girl sometimes has to do what a girl has to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> don't beat yourself up about it. Yeah. Don't beat yourself up and don't. And like the point that you were making, I just spoke to, I was talking to Diamond about, I think this point was Sunday. She was like, mm-hmm. how do you see yourself like a different than it was very a particular question like mm-hmm. something we were talking about but she was just like um are you different now than you were a few years ago when it comes to like rejection and I was just like oh absolutely because mm-hmm. like before and I, and I take rejection well however for the other person I'm very much so I'm gonna show you I'm like that scene in Julia Roberts and Julia Roberts in the scene with Pretty Woman yeah. when she comes back to the store she's like big it. mistake that's me like I'm very much like okay you rejected me I'll show you yeah and I, I don't want I don't apply anymore I don't really like you know I just yeah want you don't want to really be bothered I don't want to be bothered right yeah so that was older me younger me and so now I'm not like that anymore I'm still I still have like the energy of like oh I'll show you but I'll still keep the relationship because that's valuable and I found that even if somebody's like um oh, this is not the right fit or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, that's cool. Oh, let's have a conversation about X, Y, Z. I see y'all looking about this. I'm, y'all looking for this, y'all, you know, or just keeping in contact. Like, I would not do that before. Before, it's not a fit. Okay, bye. No, yeah, me chow. And I delete <laughs> number. I would delete all contact. That might be, I got a Gemini moon. So like, oh, you Gemini see me? Energy? Yes. <laughs> but, you know, to that point, child, it ain't serving nothing. It's not serving anything. You're like blocking your own blessing. You so are. Now, I'm okay with keeping the relationship fresh, like, or yeah. keeping it open still. Absolutely. Um, and that has come back to help me. Like people, like you said, they were, they still remember you. Mm-hmm. So that, that one thing you said might not have been there. That's not their tea. That's not their bag. But whatever you talked about, maybe in one of your conversations, it comes up in a meeting. They're like, oh, I know a girl. And because you still keep in contact with them, they're calling you like, hey, Ebony, do you still have that mm-hmm. vampire romance mm-hmm. film? And you're like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I do. Oh, we're looking for that now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so um that's one thing that I just want to say that like for y'all listening like yeah don't be like us and be like yeah. All right, bye. <laughs> don't be in your feelings <laughs> don't be in your feelings yeah be like okay just you could take you give yourself some time I give myself like 10 minutes to just freak out and be like wow like this they didn't like this blah 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 and then I kind of just okay that's cool next and I think about the next thing that I could present to them or you know just keep in contact Stay so anyway, open. So that's important. Stay no, open. that's so important. That's so important. I remember there was, um, and I'm, I'm really cool with her now. Um, it was a black woman director who mm-hmm. I, I, someone had set up a meeting for us and meeting directions is horrible. I had got so lost. I went to the wrong mm-hmm. location. Mm-hmm. And so when she showed up, she was looking for me. I wasn't there. And I'm like, no. where are you? There's another coffee shop. So anyway, yeah. child, she was ready to go, okay? Oh, yeah. um, when I tell you I had the most breakdown of breakdowns, like all I yeah. needed some rain to come down. It would have been a perfect romantic, like, comedy. R&B TV. video. Child, <laughs> dancing in the rain, you hear me? All of that. Um, <laughs> I went on Facebook because I'm petty, mm-hmm. you know? And this was a couple years yeah. ago, so growth. Um, I went on Facebook. I ain't say no names, not because I didn't want to put a name on it, but, you know, I was trying to be classy. And... Yeah. I was just like, blah, blah, blah. I wish people would show grace. Grace. I remember that post. (laughs) She did too. (laughs) She did too, child. She did too. And so she emailed, well, she texted me. And I mean, it was a long text message. So so I know she was in her bag, child. And she was just like, in so many words, she told me to get out my feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reassess this time. Loop Mm -hmm. around. 
Yeah. And schedule another meeting. And she was like, that's yeah. not so hard, is it? No. And I had to sit it's there right. and mm-hmm. I was like, so I think for a lot of us, what you are going to do is be rejected in this, in this, in this mm-hmm. industry. Um, yeah. If you're working, you're going to be rejected yeah. by people you love, by people you don't yeah, love. Yeah, I think it's like maybe 75% of this industry, to be honest, is It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. And if you are leaving people with a certain energy for every rejection, then you've boxed yourself in. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So stay open. Stay open. Yes. And not necessarily likable, child, because I don't think, you know, it's about being. Say you. Like, it is what it is. You, yeah. you like me or you're not. That don't got nothing you know, to do with me. Just <laughs> don't, post, don't post your venting on Facebook, okay? Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no, just keeping some of your, your grievances and I think some of the teachable moments to yourself is a mm-hmm. very great thing I think that we can learn in our culture especially because we're so connected to the social media I'll see people sometimes mm-hmm. post a deal that hasn't even went through yeah and like, a month later that deal is not that deal right because things happen so much happen. right girl um, so the, the lesson that we I learned. I don't talk about that until, yeah, I learned, girl, when the money is in my account, when everything is signed, and then even then I might even wait. Even then, I got to the wait. Screen. I got to <laughs> wait, okay? I might tell my first circle, my small circle first. Mm-hmm. And when it's on the screen, I'll be like, oh, I did a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, I saw somebody, um, somebody tweeted the other day and um, they were like, yeah, I did a, <laughs> I wrote a, um, a spec script for this episode but they didn't choose me i ain't salty though i was like why do y'all do this people y'all are gonna meet people, people. yeah i'm like y'all got y'all better get a journal okay get a several my, my problem thing is, i tell people that all the time when they want to uh when they want to have a pity party i'm yeah. like oh i don't attend those yeah i was like you get your journal talk to your journal no it's gonna and be then, and then let's get back to work because girl what yeah <laughs> no yes. i agree I agree. Um, okay, so we are nearing our wrap up time, uh, mm-hmm. but I think we have a few a few more moments. What what would you want to cover? What have we not covered that we can talk to the to the folks about? I want to talk about because we're both so we are um, ourselves individually, but then mm-hmm. we're also a part of like this bigger thing. For me, damn like original for you, House of June. Mm-hmm. So have you felt like you've ha- had a moment where you have to differentiate yourself like find your own out identity outside of that because I think lately I've been like okay um I, and obviously we still love our of companies course. and we're still riding for them but I feel like I've had this year I've really been like oh wait I need to make sure that like this isn't my whole identity like I'm a whole like I'm a screenwriter outside of this being yeah. a founder and a business owner you know and like how are you navigating that space oh my god that was an awesome awesome question yeah. That was like, damn. <laughs> okay, Gail. Um, all right, y'all. So we both, for the audience, we both have our own um, independent uh, film houses. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just to underscore, um, Nikita has Damn Right Originals and I am with House of June. And so the question is, outside of these founding organizations that we have and that we love and that we breathe all this life into, the artists that we are separately, how are we identify just making space yeah making space for making your separate space for yeah <sighs> such a good question um god and this is like an offline question child because i gonna, know <laughs> i gotta get into it but with that being said um i was telling someone the other day amber my business partner um she is to me how andre three stacks talks about big boy and mm. when he talks about like you know I can do a lot of things with people, but I'll never do a certain thing unless it's with Andre. So, I mean, with big boys. So with that being said, it's like, I definitely feel like House of June for me became my identity Mm -hmm. as an artist. Like Mm -hmm. I would do something and it wouldn't even be under House of June. And it's like House of June. And I'm like, no, it's not. Like you know it's House of June because I'll brand it. I'll say how to jump. Yeah, like I did the BT her thing just as me as a and they, said, and, he is, he is. and they said, "Oh, damn, that original teamed up." I was like, I, "We did it." No, we did it. <laughs> I was like, "That's that was one of the moments where I realized, oh, I have to figure out how to 
You have to. And I, I think it's very <laughs> crucial, you know what I'm saying, for anyone who is working in a collective, if you're like the Corn Brothers or any type of energy where it's like a, a, a group, I do think, because mm -hmm. that group is made of individual artists, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think it's so important to your point to always identify and create space for your isolated work mm -hmm. um, because outside of House of June, outside of Damn Right, you're always dreaming, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. some things may belong in that world and that sphere and some things you might just want to be like, you know, I want to do this. This is something I want to yeah. do. I, I'm not going to use the word selfish because I don't feel like it's selfish, but it's just like artistically, this fits for Damn Right. Mm -hmm. Artistically, this is just going to be something that I fit under my brand name. So for me, mm -hmm. um, to your point, I definitely think that, and I'm still working through some of the separate projects, having to tell people, no, this is an Ebony Supreme film, right? Like this is yeah. June. Because they just, and I think that's an awesome thing too. It speaks so much to the brand that you're creating, mm -hmm. um, that people are identifying all that you do under this umbrella. So it is really yeah. awesome to have like this, you know, this powerful entity that you've done, but outside mm -hmm. of that, you're an artist, right? And you have so many yeah. things you want to stretch yourself. So yeah. for my business partner and I, like for Amber, she's primarily a shooter. So she's mm -hmm. always shooting things. Um, you know, the girl is shooting stuff that for passion and stuff to eat, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm loving it. I'm cheering it. Um, I send her jobs. Uh, I'm a little bit different because, you know, like for me, she can send me jobs, but it's not like you know, girl, it's at yeah. um, yeah. <laughs> with that being said, I think for me, I took time last year to really look at who I was as a creative. Yeah. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to brand an Ebony Supreme film. Yeah. Um, because I wanted some distinction for the things that I plan on doing. Mm -hmm. Because when it's a collective, everything is a discussion. Yeah. Yeah, or at least Amber and I. That's how we rock. Like, yeah, yeah. there ain't really no movement I'm making without approval, right? And right, vice right. versa. And when you get to a certain part in your artistic process or whatever in your voice, you're like, I don't necessarily want to check in with anybody. Yeah, like I just yeah. kind of want to just just run this down and hold. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, it definitely was like having intentional space where I was like, no, this is an Ebony Supreme film. Let me go ahead and get the website. Let me do all the branding I did already. Yeah. Maybe not, it's not as laborious because I've done it already. Um, and so yeah. it kind of funnels itself, but yeah. it, definitely, it definitely took separate branding. Do you yeah. think it's going to take separate branding like for you? Are you having to do that? Yeah, I already have a website that I'm probably launching next week. Yeah. Like my personal one. So I just never had a personal website. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't, even on my personal email, everything is like everything damn right. Um, and sometimes when I'm, when I'm sending stuff to people um, who are just asking for my services as a screenwriter, I'm always like, oh, so that's just out at the bottom. Yeah. Like, it's just very, it's just very odd. So I realize I do need to make sure that I just have those two separate things mm -hmm. um, just for business purposes and for creative, like some stuff, you know, I might collaborate with some other people or whatever. It's just like being a, and why I call it a screenwriting label is because I want to mimic how like the music industry is in a sense. And, or independent label. It's like that. I can do I can do features on other people's songs. I'm still gonna be a part of this label. Exactly. But I can also make a quick little mixtape or a freestyle or you know what I mean? Like exactly. I can still do those things and still be myself. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. So like that's mm -hmm. that's space where I'm at now. So no, I love yeah, that. I just wanted to see what you thought. No, that's such a great question. And I think I'm always kind of like working through that space. Mm -hmm. Um because you know, once you have like damn right is so perfect. Like, it's such a great name. Um, <laughs> and so, of course, like, it's so easy for people to conflate every great thing that you do to that because yeah, uh, yeah. it just fits so perfectly. But mm -hmm. I, I definitely think for artists in general, the more you start to find your voice, yeah. um, you get into words like branding, which I really, really hate. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is a part of the process, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, and like, what do people know you for? Like, what is your calling card? Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is, I think, is something I wanted to talk about when you were mentioning all of the projects that you did monthly. Is mm -hmm. that to have a calling card for people to know not everything that you can write, but like what your strengths are? 
Yeah, in a sense, yeah. And and I and I and because I'm interested in so many different things, like and I don't like to be boxed in as like the drama the, the family drama writer or the yeah. you know, I, I like to do different things and I'm and I still beat myself up to this day for not being able to do the thriller film, but like the um psychological thriller that I wanted to do a part of, of that. Um mm-hmm. I end up pushing it back. Um because I just have so many stories and they're not all one type of story and so that was the reason I was like I want to just show that I could do all of these things so that if anybody's like hey we need this but I see that you only do this I'm like oh no 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 I have here you go mm-hmm, you know what I mean mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. so I think it is important for people to have something something this is our resume like we're writers and so of course like scripts are our resume but people we are in a world now people are so visual they need to see Very something. visual and so like you're gonna have to make something a quick trailer a quick something you're gonna mm-hmm. have to make some kind of visual calling card mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. so don't be intimidated y'all don't be intimidated yeah. Yeah. um all right so i think that like we've almost completed our kiki session okay um i'm going to wrap up by saying that i'm so happy to share space with you Yay. i think you are amazing um, I was so proud of you when you made the journey to California, to Los Angeles. Um, and I you. wanted you to touch on that a little bit before we leave for folks yeah. who are perhaps from a smaller market, mm-hmm. wanting to move mm-hmm. into a bigger market. Yeah. And how does that experience, what is that looking like? So a lot of people don't know or remember, but this is like my second time here. So I okay. moved out here in 2013 before I did News, which mm-hmm. was my first feature film. So I moved out here um, in 20, right out of right college, so 2013, just to get a feel for it. Because I already, that's all I've been hearing. You know, Hollywood is in, you got to be in Hollywood. You got to da 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 And, you know, so I'm like, okay, so I know that this is where I need to be after college. So I come out here just to get a feel for it, just to kind of test the waters. I took a few workshops. I was working a regular job. I, I was doing a, a nonprofit. Um, so I was just kind of getting a feel for the energy here. I didn't really do much like mingling with filmmakers to be honest. I should have. Um, I did a little bit, but I really just wanted to feel the energy of the space. And I was like, okay. Um, and while I'm out here, I'm going to finish my feature film. So I finished my feature film and I said, okay, I'm going to move back to LA. I mean, move back to Atlanta and shoot it. I'm going to get with some people and I'm going to make it because all the people who said they want to help me are in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, but my, my goal was to always just go to Atlanta, shoot back and move right back. And that, that ended up not happening because I ended up finding a tribe of people when I went to Atlanta. I was like, oh, there's so many more people who wanted to do so many more things and, and help me make all of this stuff. So I ended up just staying and making more and making more and making more. Mm-hmm. And then, like you had mentioned earlier, you get to a point where you're like, I have done every indie thing <laughs> possible. <laughs> like, yeah. it's now time for me to, to give myself the opportunity to... Um, just be, I mean, I might have to just go to LA and be a smaller fish in a big pond. I had become a bigger fish in a small pond. Yeah. And sometimes people like like that. They like being, you know, and that's mm-hmm. not for me. I like to grow. I like to be challenged. Yeah. And it's like, you can't, you can't catch, catch fish on dry land. So it's like, mm-hmm. I need to put myself in the place I need to be to, yeah. to get to the places I need to be. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, let me go to LA. And I just did. It's expensive. Mm-hmm. Okay, the expensive <laughs> part, like, because people hear about it all the time. Yeah. So it's expensive, like, oh, girl, save up before I come expensive, or oh, girl, I can land on my feet and make it work. That depends on who you are as a person. Because sometimes mm-hmm. people can, like, a person like me, I don't know, how, I don't know if it's from growing up and just having to do what you got to do with what you got. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe having to eat rice and beans for a, for a month straight, or like, some adobe on it. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> so I, I think that that was like a natural thing for me, not yeah. wishing that for anybody, but yeah, because it yeah. was like natural for me to just have to like try to figure something out and just like um, live like just real basic for a minute yeah. until I can work my way up. I was okay with that. So I saved up, but I probably saved up enough for me to be here for a month, which is not a lot. Like that's right. not a lot at all. Because right. um, it, it, like once you like once you move, you got to pay you know, to either drive or fly or whatever you're doing. I drove cross country with my stuff, not even yeah. all my stuff. Some of my stuff was still in storage. I had to, it was a lot. Yeah. But, uh, so that wasn't me. I didn't really do the whole saving up 
a lot of money to move. I saved mm-hmm. up enough for maybe a month and a half. But I knew that I was like the hustler that I've been here before, right? Like I've had to try to figure something out in a very short amount of time. And so that's what I ended up having to do. Some people are not like that, which is no shade or nothing. Yeah. Know yourself. Mm-hmm. You might need to save up. You, If you know you get nervous, you get anxious when, when it's crunch time, you need to save up for at least like however long, I don't know, six yeah. months maybe. Whatever your security um, is. Whatever your security yeah. is, but if you're somebody who knows how to, like, if you know you can hustle, you've been in there, there before, you can just live real basic for a little bit until you catch your, catch your grounding, um, I would say, like, just go for it. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. probably, like, not good advice, all the financial advice. No, it's amazing. It's encouraging. But I'm just like, just go for it, honestly, because, like, you got to get here. You Sometimes if you just keep trying to plan and get here, plan and get here, you're not going to get here. Just, like, you got to just do it and be like, oh. And also know that a lot of people from Atlanta are here. Mm-hmm. So it's easy for you to like, just check around and see people you know. I, I like, I say this jokingly all the time, but like my first year here, my house was probably like a women's shelter because my friends were tr- moving out here, my active friends, my yeah. creative friends moving out here. And I'm like, you could just stay with me. You could just stay with me for yeah. however long to see you find a place, find a job, find a blah, blah, blah. Like I, because I know how the struggle is, I was just so... Girl, I was like, Cal, I got a two goal. Yeah, messages. make it happen. You know what I mean? I was mm-hmm. like t- telling people like, here, you can, you better apply for food stamps. You better apply for unemployment. Mm-hmm. You, I was like giving people the resources because I was just so excited and happy and wanting them to just do yeah. it. That I was like, I will help you however I can. And I, was strugg- I was struggling too. I'm just yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> like, come on, girl. <laughs> like, we just don't figure it out. Um, yeah. So like tap into your, your people here and see what you can do. Like, you know, I don't know. You got to, honestly, you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. You have to be resilient. You got to you gotta be scrappy. Yes. You got to use yeah. your imagination. It's not pretty. It's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's not luxurious. No, really you might not eat, be able to get your facials and eat. You, you might not. You have to and be hard to say. <laughs> exactly. And that's too hard for you. Then I mean, this might not be... It might but not. You want to do, or it might not. It might not be the time because it's not all. It's not pretty all the time, and but I'm okay with that sometimes. You know. What I wanted to tell our audience also too about um, Nikia's journey of of going from Atlanta to LA, um, or just like having that big move for everyone is, although she mentioned that she didn't necessarily have a lot of money, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she had a lot of work. Yes, I came here with my work. So that you was had, my currency and relationships. So the currency you give, you see where I'm going. Like you have millions on, on your drive. You feel me? Like okay. and that's what's that's the that's the key part. So mm-hmm. for people who are coming from families where you know what I'm saying you don't have an aunt or a dad or a mom who can yeah. be paying your rent and their mortgage or paying your yeah. car note or you know you don't have family or folks who can do that for right. you. Some right. people do, and it's such a blessing, right? And it's a blessing. It's a blessing. I'd be like, who child? I envy you. Child, it's, 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 so it's a whole Hallmark you. movie. I love to see it. Um, <laughs> but for, for those of us who, you know, kind of have to get it off of the muscle, um, mm-hmm. I definitely don't think that you should allow other people's horror stories to kind of influence what your story is going to be. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Don't let people's um, inhibitions or their fears or what didn't happen for them, don't don't wear that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and also to that, beyond everything, yes. do the work. And I, yes. I, I definitely think that before you make any sort of transition where it's like, all right, this is a big move. Yeah. Ask yourself, like Nikita said before, what kind of filmmaker am I? Yeah. Right? Um, sometimes pressure bust pipes. Sometimes it create diamonds. Yeah. Where are you on that? Where are you? Yeah. And if you got to go to LA to write, I might need you to stay home for a little a second. Absolutely. If you can't do it in this in a in a in a not even a smaller city, but just in a space that's not as fast paced, it's not as yeah. Drive, then I don't know. You gotta no like it's that time. I think that was that was why I felt so much more confident to move because I'm mm-hmm. like okay at that point I had two three web series a feature film I think maybe like 13 14 short films I'm like okay like I have stuff that I can show I feel yeah. like I can come out here meet some people get something popping make something shake so don't just 
you can't be the same person you are right now in the smaller town you're in or wherever you are and think that you're just going to take that same body and flourish in a up. bigger, faster space. Right. You really got to level up. So do what mm-hmm. you can now in the smaller spaces that you're in and then take what you take that currency and also so work. The currency is in the craft and the currency is in the relationship. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's probably, honestly, mm-hmm. the relationship, I don't think people it. get I don't see people not have work yeah. under their belt. Hello. Particularly Hello. non black people. Yeah. Um, but still I've seen people make moves, major moves, just off of who they know, who they've like and who knows them. Mm-hmm. So don't underestimate the power of like of work in the room, right? Of work in the room. Okay. I had no. to learn I had to I was I used to be right. salty at people like that because I was a worker. I was always yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. productive, like that's my thing. I'm like the yeah. worker. And so I would be so salty, old me, at people who work in the room and they did nothing. I'm like, yeah. I did, I had all of this work and why? Yeah. You know, and they just talking to this person and now they got a, a deal or they're da 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 da. But I just honestly, I think Nicki Minaj said it. She said she had a video where she's like, I'm not your enemy. She's like, all the haters, I'm not your enemy. Yeah, don't get mad at me. She's like, I'm not your enemy. <laughs> I am your example. So Ooh. you need to follow suit. And I was like, oh. So I, I had to be like, this is, this person is not the person I need to be mad at. I need to be like, okay, they work in the room. I need to figure out how to work the room. Yeah. Because then, I'm a, I'm, then I'll get even more valuable because I work in the room and I got the work. You know what I mean? So now yeah. I got relationships and the work. So it's a double up. So yeah, just cool child. I know. Cool child. <laughs> we could talk about this forever. We um, really could. Using what you have, I definitely want mm-hmm. to just go over the points. I think it's something that I want everyone to know, like, it's accessible to us all. Uh, we all can mm-hmm. use what we have. Nikia said something very beautiful about when we first start creating, if you have an apartment, you mm-hmm. envision your scene in your apartment. Um, I did a mm-hmm. whole uh, web series. I didn't finish it, y'all. But I started one. Um, listen, the web series are hard. Okay, listen, child, that's another. Uh, <laughs> People still threatening me about the season two, but anyway, we don't. Child, um, <laughs> but using what I have, using what you have, um, mm-hmm. understanding that you can't build a community or a team overnight. Mm-hmm. Uh, valuable Absolutely. people will be valuable. People will come in your sphere um, over time because it takes time. Yes. You also yes. have to leave your your comfort. Uh, yes. to actually find people. Yes. So if you're in a cities where from Atlanta to Oklahoma to wherever you are, find your people, find your community groups, find mm-hmm. your film people, find your interesting people who are doing interesting things. Mm-hmm. Um, Nakia also talked about a point that I loved, which was you, you were talking about you were in school, but you mm-hmm. did a lot of things. Yeah. And I do find a lot of folks who make it have tried mm-hmm. a lot of different things before mm-hmm. they are the showrunner, right? So yeah, yeah. I think that's just being open, being mm-hmm. open to the spirit of creativity because it finds yeah. us in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, knowing what kind of filmmaker you are, mm-hmm. you gotta be sisters because I learned early on, I wasn't the kind of girl who could PA on people's stuff, like on the, on the feature film. Yeah. I wasn't the girl to go send for your coffee. Like I was right. like, I got to get out. I had to create my yeah. own thing. So right. <laughs> when I saw some other people who I came up with as PAs, right? And now they were hired on by Will Packer. Like they had moved up the line, right? Yeah. Don't be mad. Don't be sad. Don't be mad because that's just not your journey. That's not your path. There's so many paths to do it. So mm-hmm. we definitely talked about like the journey being very, I think across the board, we all share similar stories, but yeah. it really is your personal experience, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so you can hear Nakia talk, you can hear me talk, you can hear Ava talk, you can hear all the beautiful people talk. Take what work, leave what don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Vent in your journal. Yes, please. <laughs> Learn from yourself, help. Check yourself. <laughs> accountability. Your yeah, right. no, and accountability. Pivot. Yeah, pivot. And pivot. Pivot is definitely mm-hmm. the, the, the mantra for, for all life. It's just a pivot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and most importantly, if you are a writer, uh, like mm-hmm. we are, understand the importance of your story. Give yourself time yes. to write. Give yourself mm-hmm. time to actually ideate. Uh, yes. Nikia said that when she's writing, she's not on social media. She, yeah. take, she takes her breaks. It's okay to take a break. Mm-hmm. Um, with that being said, if all minds and hearts are clear, mm-hmm. 
I feel so great today. Um, I, I feel great that, too. Thank you, Nikki. I hope that everyone really um, appreciates this space. I definitely appreciate talking to another Black woman in film because it's yes. so it's so hard, but it's so great. I think this journey that we're on, you don't do yes. it unless you love it for as long as yes. you're doing it, right? Yeah. Um, and when you find your people, um, your kinfolk, yeah. You definitely, uh, for me, I feel encouraged. Like when I mm -hmm. see the kid do things and I see our peers do things, I'm like, oh shit, God is still in the blessing business. You know what still I'm saying? Okay. Like, okay. Like, okay. like I'm somewhere in that line. Um, yeah. So encouragement. And Nakia, if you can take us home with, you said something about when you feel bitter, you do, or you feel in your feelings. What, do you, what did you say you do? What was the, the pivot? Um, I was like, I just checked myself and I, and I asked myself, like, what am I not doing? That was be, it. You know what I mean? Like, you got to ask yourself, what can I be doing to not make me feel bitter? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What's the work that I'm avoiding? That's what it is. When you're bitter, it's because you are avoiding something that you, that could have gotten you to that space. So ask mm. yourself that. What's the work that I'm avoiding and get to that? Get to the work. What is the work that you're avoiding when we're in our feelings because we're human and we're artists. Mm -hmm. And I definitely want to mm -hmm. like tell everyone that if you're having any doubts about your purpose and about like, how are you going to get to the next step? Know that you're mm -hmm. not alone in that. It seems to mm -hmm. be a forever question that we ask at each level, but definitely mm -hmm. always circle it back to what is the work that I need to be doing to put out into the world, right? right? Mm -hmm. To draw this and energy then to me. Go the ahead, person yeah. that's making it, the person that's in the space you want to be in, that's not your enemy. That's your example. That's important. No enemies. No enemies. No. It's like, like a, hey, hey girl, um, <laughs> I see you doing the thing. I love that. Let's talk. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, don't yeah. Be a hater. Don't be a hater. Yeah, don't be a hater. <laughs> don't be a hater because it ain't going to do nothing but take your edges back. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> On that note, I'm so happy to uh, be in this space, National uh, Black Arts Festival with another Black woman in film. We hope that you all enjoyed our talk. Many yeah. more to come. Uh, do you want to tell people where they can follow you? Because I love following you. Yeah. <laughs> You're so cute. I love following love you. You can follow me at ScreenWriteHer underscore. That's on Instagram, on Twitter, and Facebook. I'm not really on Facebook like that. I need to do better. <laughs> um, but then also you can follow Damn Right Originals at Damn Right Originals on Instagram, DW Originals on Twitter, and our website, DamnRightOriginals.com. And my website is soon to come. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see when it launches. You guys, follow Nakia. <laughs> um, I am Ebony Supreme um, on yes, all of are. the little social networks, uh, the House of <laughs> June. Uh, definitely follow us both. Uh, so, 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 so awesome to share this space and this time with y'all. And until yes. next time, what a time to be a Black filmmaker, child. Yes, absolutely. Okay. On that note, bye. <laughs>